How'd you like to spend Christmas on Christmas Island? Just like Miss Ella Fitzgerald sings about Christmas Island, I bet most of us would much rather be on a sunny island about now. This nice, cozy greenhouse is the closest I can come to, so I'm about ready to take a dip with the fish. Kathleen Mooney with EIEIO's Organic Farm in Wembley again for more juicy tips from the farm. Today I'm at my friend Rocco's Aquaponic Farm in Maxwell, Texas. We are going to be talking about the hydroponics versus aquaponics versus growing in dirt. Now there's so much to cover. There's evidence of civilizations 5,000 years ago doing aquaponics. Think about rice paddies in Asia. They knew that if they tried to grow crops on their rice paddies, the roots would go down get the fish emulsion out of the water and flourish. The Incas and the Mayans knew this too and they built big ponds and built gardens on top of the pond to take advantage of the fish poop. Now I've heard that most aquaponic farmers have the very best success with lettuce and leafy greens. They could get a fully matured head of lettuce within four weeks. And let me tell you, out in the dirt, you know it takes about two and a half, three months to get a nice fully matured head of lettuce. So if you want a quick salad, think about aquaponics. So this is how it all works. First, you get a big tank. Fill it up with the different fish. In this tank, we find copper-nosed bluegills. They do not require additional heat in the wintertime, so they're very functional. You can use cod. You can use tilapia. Those two are a little bit more fragile, so you have to use a little heating system for them. Some people use bass, but the bass, you have to keep the water really cold, so they might be a hassle too. I think that copper-nosed bluegills are the best choice. All living things need nutrients. So we're gonna start right here with this big tank. Rocco feeds the fish every day, and then the water filters down into this secondary tank. That is where the solids from their poop drops down to the bottom. And the water on top is piped over to the long troughs, and that's where you float the lettuce. This water comes down and fertilizes all the lettuce that he's growing in the mint and anything else he's growing, and then it circulates back to the fish. So it's just this beautiful cycle. All this little head of lettuce needed was the nutrient-laced water to produce this many roots and produce this beautiful head of lettuce. Oh. In addition to using the fish poop water to fertilize your lettuce, you can also eat the fish. Say you have some firecracker like M80s, you can just pop one in there, blows up in the water, stuns the fish, they float to the top, scoop dinner right off the top. Oh. Okay, folks. So right here is an example of something that's a little bit more doable at home. We have three tanks right here and a big tank right here to hold the fish. We have about a hundred fish in it. If you scale this all down and have just one growing tank, then your fish tank would have about half, 50 fish for one of these. And that would feed a family of four for a month. Well, and this is all outdoors. so. In the summertime, with all of our heat in Texas, you're going to want to put a shade cloth over the top and you'll experience about a 10% uh, evaporation every month, which is not bad. I always preach about eating seasonally, so you can do that with aquaponics or hydroponics. You can grow cucumbers and squashes and green beans in the summertime. Watermelon and cantaloupe and tomatoes are best in the dirt though. Bigger and better, if you wanna stick with that. So you know what you should do? Do a small tank with some fish, and then over here have your little dirt garden where you're growing your cantaloupe, your watermelon, your tomatoes. Bingo, you got it all covered. And one of the biggest benefits of having a little aquaponic setup, you can scoop that sludge out and put it right on your garden. It is the absolute best fertilizer you can even imagine. The NPK is just off the charts. Now this is aquaponics because a lot of people like to raise fish. You might want to do hydroponics. You know, this close to Christmas, you might still be looking for that hard to buy person, but if they're a hobbyist, you just might want to get that hobbyist set up with a hydroponic system. Now that's a whole different setup, although it uses water, 
but you put nutrients into the water that then feed the vegetables. You don't have the fish to provide the nutrients. So it might be a little bit easier set up because then you don't have a tank of fish to deal with. Between the two, with hydroponics, you can simply have a Zipgro tower or several of them. You can get a lot of produce right off your Zipgro tower. I've read that aquaponics cost about 30 to 50% more for the initial setup and you have to wait sometimes up to 18 months to get the right PA. Hydroponics, it's like a quick start. You can get a whole setup. I called a place and they said you can get a setup for about $400. It, you just set it up in your garage so you don't have to worry about hot summers or cold winters. Get the right lighting, 400 bucks and try it. It might be kind of fun. Sure don't want to discourage anyone from gardening or aquaponicking or hydroponicking. The easiest way with the least complications is to spend a little bit more money up front and get an off the shelf system. But there's those two choices and you always complement it with growing things in your garden. It's just a kind of beautiful complementary way to grow and self-sustain. But hopefully I provided enough of a tease if any of y'all have ever been interested in aquaponics or hydroponics to maybe take that leap of faith and try it out. My dear dad used to always say, you know, I would have married Miss Ella if I hadn't met your mom first. Now they both may be long gone, but the good Lord still has all of us here floating along, doing the best we can so let's enjoy the ride and you know maybe by this time next year we'll all be on some sunny island meanwhile have a merry merry and we'll see you next week for more tasty tips from the farm Christmas island. how'd you like to hang a stocking on a great big coconut tree